you're threatening to force all these negotiations for a year until such time that the union can be decertified? We've simply not faced such an inexperienced group uh, that has an understanding, of, a misunderstanding of how the process typically works, that's all. So Harsh words. That is, only if you've never been sure at the bargaining table before. It's sad to say, but the emotions and language of this scenario are pretty typical, and exactly the type of tough love that a new negotiating committee needs to experience. We want them to experience the frustration, the stress, uh, the emotional turmoil, uh, the frustration that often occurs in a real set of negotiations. Whippensinger director Chris Wagner, who's playing the part of management here in this room, has seen firsthand how this class is making a difference. Is it's really helping people prepare for an actual set of upcoming negotiations. Much of the other uh, education that we do here at the Wimpensinger helps people prepare in a general way, but this helps them get ready for the next set of negotiations that they face. First it was classroom time for these men and women to learn the ins and outs of negotiations and a few tricks of the trade that have worked in the past. The first tentative agreement is the hardest one to get. And then if you start with something, there can be some advantage in some negotiations to starting with something you're fairly certain you can get an agreement on because it gets you used to the idea you can't agree. But the classroom is just the first step because the machinists have learned that nothing compares to hands-on experience. And for this group, time is a factor. In less than three weeks, the Automated Flight Service Station Specialist here from Lockheed Martin will have an actual seat at the table, and it won't be a mock situation. Aerospace Coordinator John Crowdis says this experience is good for everyone in the room. It is invaluable to them as a negotiating at the table and to me as a Chief Spokesman. It's, it's very difficult for a Chief Spokesman to do his job and try to train a committee at the same time. If he has a well-trained and a well-knowledgeable committee when he goes to the table, then the company is the one that's the disadvantage, not the union. This takes it from the white tower theory down to real application. It's important for committees to understand what goes on in negotiations, especially if they've never been in them. Um, this also helps bond committees. Last year, just weeks before a group from Fort Rucker Army Base in Alabama were to enter their first contract, they came to the same class and quickly realized this training was like no other. From my experience in negotiations, this is probably as close as you're going to get besides sitting across the table speaking to the CEOs. I was surprised. I didn't know that it, was, it would be as real. The men and women of the Lockheed Group agree. It feels like real life. Many were shocked by the intensity of the session. We're going to have a hell of a time making progress in these sets of negotiations if, in fact, we come to an understanding and then you suddenly want to amend it. Especially since this group is working with the same items they will face in the real contract. But this committee is larger than the people who sit in this room. Paul Shepard, playing the role of the group's committee chairman, received an up-close and personal look at what the IEM goes up against each and every day. He was surprised that management, or as we know him, Chris, was so effective at baiting him and his team. Just from the start, that it was uh, you know, starting the negotiations when he started to take control and uh, said, well, here are the rules, you know, agree to this, agree to that, agree to that. Stuff we were completely prepared to even uh, tackle or argue. You know, we knew our proposals going in and we knew the stuff that was important to us. We had no idea that that kind of stuff was coming on the other side of the table. So certainly agreed to some things and painted ourselves into a corner on things we probably shouldn't have. How quickly things uh, go off on different tangents. How quickly, how great you need to pay attention. And uh, it's, uh, you have to be at the top of your game at this thing. But in the end, the two gained something from the day they didn't realize was part of the lesson, a bit of confidence. But I was also impressed that uh, when I did stick my ground, or when we did stick, our, you know, draw that line in the sand, essentially, even though it was tough and uncomfortable for a while and I thought he was never going to back off, eventually, you know, he did. But one question remains, both from last year's class and this one. How did Chris become so good at being so bad? The answer, he had years of practice watching from the right side of the table. You can see his mind turning. 
He's talking, but he's thinking. I've seen some of those things said before, and I think Chris should be in Hollywood. He's doing an outstanding job of representing the company, and um, he's really waking up the people that haven't been exposed to real negotiations with a real company before. Game's over. Game's over. You really won.